Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Fissure sealants are dental resins that are applied to the pits and fissures of teeth to inhibit dental caries. Because of declines in smooth surface caries observed in children, sealants represent the most effective agent for preventing caries, which is predominantly now a disease of the pits and fissures of teeth. The objectives of this videotape are to present the rationale for sealant use to demonstrate sealant materials, to demonstrate a sealant application technique, and to describe methods of patient education about sealants. The best candidates for fissure sealants are the first and second permanent molars, since the pits and fissures of these teeth are most susceptible to caries. Ideally, sealant should be applied to the teeth as soon as they have erupted into the mouth. Tooth selection should also be based on the following criteria. Interproximal surfaces should be caries-free. Teeth should demonstrate deep fissure morphology. Fissures may catch with an explorer. And teeth must be sufficiently erupted so that a dry field can be maintained. When considering materials, the operator must make some decisions about acid etches, types of sealants and delivery systems, and polymerization methods. A variety of etches are available, and choice of a particular etching material may be based upon what works comfortably in an operator's hands and the particular situation in which it is employed. Here, a liquid etch is demonstrated. A liquid etch adapts well to occlusal morphology, but it may be difficult to limit the extent of tooth coverage. This etch is a semi-fluid gel. The consistency of this etch allows greater control over its placement. This gel etch, which is more viscous, may be more difficult to adapt to irregular occlusal contours. Sealant delivery systems vary, but are essentially of two types, cannula systems and instrument systems. Here, a cannula system is used to apply a clear, unfilled sealant to a tooth. When an unfilled sealant is used, any high spots created during application will be worn away by the patient's occlusion. In this second example, a plastic instrument shaped like a ball burnisher is used to apply an opaque, filled sealant. Filled sealants, which contain about half the filler found in composite restorative materials, may require some occlusal adjustment following application. There appears to be no difference in performance between filled and unfilled sealants. There are two methods of sealant polymerization, chemical or autopolymerization and light polymerization. Visible light polymerization is probably the most common method used to cure sealants. Because of the intensity of these lights, protective eyewear or protective shield, as demonstrated here, should be used during polymerization. Before commencing any treatment, a complete patient history should be taken. A thorough clinical examination, including radiograph, should then be performed, and the teeth to be sealed can be identified. The technique begins by cleaning the pits and fissures. A prophylaxis brush trimmed to a point can be used for this activity. Plain flour of pumice without any additives or fluoride is recommended since these additives may interfere with the bonding procedure. The tooth surface should then be rinsed thoroughly with an air water spray. Isolation is achieved most effectively with a rubber dam. However, cotton rolls may be more practical. 
and can provide equally effective isolation if a meticulous technique is used. The tooth surface is then etched with phosphoric acid for 60 seconds. If a liquid etch as demonstrated here is used, the surface should be kept moist with acid and not allowed to dry. The solution should be applied with a gentle dabbing motion to keep the solution agitated. The surface should not be rubbed or burnished with the applicator since burnishing will smooth the enamel surface and decrease the eventual bond strength. If a gel etch is used, it should be left undisturbed during the etching period. The acid etching material and its reaction products must be removed by washing the tooth. This can be accomplished using an air water spray for at least 10 to 15 seconds if a liquid etch is used, or at least 30 seconds if a gel etch is used. The tooth is then thoroughly dried with compressed air that should be oil and water free. Care should be taken to avoid blowing saliva onto the etched surface, which will now have a frosted appearance. Saliva contamination at this point must be avoided. If contamination should occur, the surface must be washed, dried, re-etched for 15 seconds, and then washed and dried again before proceeding. The sealant material is then applied to the tooth surface using the chosen delivery system. A dical applicator, which is similar to a ball burnisher, is being used here to apply an opaque, filled sealant. Small increments of sealant are brought to the tooth until all pits and fissures are covered. The sealant will be cured by visible light polymerization. A protective shield is being used during polymerization. The tip of the light should be held close to the tooth to ensure optimal polymerization. Manufacturer's specifications should be followed for determining the length of polymerization time. The sealant is evaluated for air bubbles and incomplete coverage of pits and fissures by moving the explorer from the tooth to the sealant. More sealant can be applied at this point if no contamination has occurred. The isolation materials can then be removed. A thin film of unpolymerized sealant will remain on the tooth and should be wiped off with a cotton roll since the film has an unpleasant taste. The occlusion is then evaluated using articulating paper. A small round carbide burr can be used to remove excess sealant. The specific teeth that were sealed and the color of the sealant should be recorded in the patient's chart. Since sealant loss is most likely to occur within the first 12 months of application, evaluation should occur within a year of treatment. Teeth should be dried and then examined using a mirror and explorer. All pits and fissures should be covered with sealant. A variety of educational materials are available and include pamphlets from the American Dental Association, the American Society of Dentistry for Children, and the National Institute of Dental Research. Pamphlets may also be available from sealant manufacturers. Providing parents with a visual representation of a sealant is critical and may be accomplished with posters, charts, or with tooth models. Additional things to discuss with parents may include the atraumatic nature of the procedure, the potential longevity of sealants, and fees. Compliance with a total preventive program which includes fluoride use, appropriate dietary habits, and good oral hygiene is also essential. The objectives of this videotape were to present the rationale for sealant use to demonstrate sealant materials, to demonstrate a sealant application technique, and to describe methods of patient education about sealants. Including fissure sealants in the preventive armamentarium of a dental office, 
ensures the likelihood that young patients can enjoy a lifetime free from dental caries. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.